Hello and welcome to another edition of Minor Obsession. Scott Lieberman with Sean Newton and we are talking football preview. It's our last home game of the season. We've got two games remaining. This is a big one. We're playing the top team in Conference USA East. We've got Marshall at home. They've got a similar shade of green, which I don't like. So I know the stadium is going to be packed in green, but hopefully the majority of it is our green. Sean, are you ready for this game? It's a big one. I'm so pumped. And let me tell you, before we get into football too, how pumped I am about Charlotte men's soccer starting off the NCAA tournament with a home game Thursday against Mercer, 7 p.m. We need to pack out Transamerica Field, give Charlotte men's soccer a home field advantage like nothing else. It's going to be a tough game. Every team that makes the tournament is capable of beating any other team that makes the tournament. And if we win and make it through the first round, we've got a road game against Clemson. So just down the street, Clemson's the number two seed in the tournament. And uh, that'll be a tough battle, but definitely an exciting road ahead. So we'll keep you up to date along the way. Yeah, and for those that aren't aware that haven't been to a soccer game, but have been to a football game or a basketball game, soccer also serves beer. So just another enticing reason to come out there and support the Niners. Enticing for sure. (laughs) So moving on to football, I'm stoked. I think that that stadium is going to be rocking. We have a chance. We've we've never had this chance before in the history of, of our program. We have a chance to be playing for bowl eligibility at home in front of a home field crowd. Uh, I like it. I like our odds. I know Marshall's the favorite in the game, and we can talk about that, but in general, the way we've been playing, I feel really good about the team efforts we've had over the past few games coming into a, a tougher opponent. Well, Marshall is coming off a big win. They played Louisiana Tech last week and dominated them 31-10, to and Louisiana Tech is first in Conference USA West. So more than likely, that will be the Conference USA championship game, Louisiana Tech versus Marshall, and Marshall just – beat the the tar off them so a little nervous there the positive I guess when you're looking at Marshall versus Charlotte is Marshall has been dominant at home and that was a home game just as as we've been dominant at home they're five and one at home we're four and one at home they're two and two on the road so that means they are beatable when they go on the road and gosh we need that they're on a five game winning streak we're on a three game winning streak so two powers are colliding here Marshall's a really good team I think this is probably the the best team we've seen since maybe Clemson. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's hard to argue. I mean, we've had a few marquee matchups throughout the year, this being one of them, Clemson and App State being the other two in my mind. Uh, I think it's destined to be a shootout. I think it's going to be a high-scoring match. Uh, I think that we're going to be heavily reliant on our offense moving down the field, controlling the ball, keeping their offense off the field uh, to give our defense some rest. But it's definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, Marshall's averaging 26 points per game and giving up 22 points per game versus our 31 points and giving up 35. Obviously, there's a skewed stat there with Clemson in there, but uh, in general, speaks to me like, their offense is going to put up a few extra points on average, and, and we're going to have to maintain that 31-ish average to stay in the game. Offensive speaking, total yards, actually even there at 424, essentially, for both of us. Uh, and then defensive yards allowed, they, they definitely have an advantage there, only giving up 360 to our, our 408 average. So I still feel like this one might be a barn burner. How about you? Yeah, it should be pretty interesting. You know, once we start talking about that stuff, I like to always go to the spreads, and I think that's where Vegas is nine times out of ten pretty accurate. You can look back to the majority of our games. Obviously, there's a few special ones where where we went way under or way over, but you look at like a Clemson, and we covered by one point. So yep. normally Vegas is pretty accurate. They have this game at 55 and a half, so – a little bit lower than our last couple of games. I believe the last game was 65 or something like that. So we'll see. 
I I keep going under because we never go under, and uh, I expect that to to potentially happen here. I would say sixty percent of whatever I'm looking at, they all have the under. I I, I tend to to gear towards the under. I think once you get into November football, defense seems to really get going. Offense gets a little bit more nervous. I I, I see it as a a tight game. Still a barn burner, right? Like 55 and a half is still a lot. Like a 20-24 type game. Yeah. The spread for the game is seven. So we are getting seven points at home. That's uh that's a, a a healthy amount of points. I, I think the consensus on that is people are taking Marshall. Seven points is a steal. I think we we win this game or lose this game in a in a heartbreaker. But I think we're we're in it. We we realize the the importance of the game. I think the crowd's behind us. We had a bye week. Coach Healy's been getting everyone ready. We we know that this is the difference between us potentially going to a bowl or not. And it's senior day. I think it's a, a really tight game. I, I hope for the best. I think if we lose this game, um, it's a tight one, maybe a field goal, something like that. But kind of where I was going, I, I'm i going 24-20, Charlotte. 24-20. Okay. I like that. At least you're on the right side of the the picks this time. The 24 is on our <laughs> I'm not going to pick against us in, in this – Capacity. I will say the under is a lock, and definitely the seven is a lock. I think Charlotte could lose, but I don't think we're losing by more than seven. Okay, well, if you are a fan of the podcast and regularly listen to us, I think I'm on like a a six or seven pick win streak over Scott on that, so his under lock and seven lock – you can take it with a grain of salt because his analysis hasn't been great lately. Mm. Uh, and I'm going opposite. I'm going to say that over for sure. Uh, and I realize we have hit a lot of overs, but, but with the way we score and the way our defense tends to allow other teams to score, I mean, they, they definitely try and bend, but don't break, but teams are moving down the field with some big plays and quick, quick succession to get teams into scoring position. I got to think that it's like a, 33 30 game us win by a field goal last second thing similar to what we had last year where Jonathan Cruz kicks a long field goal to keep FAU out of it I think Jonathan Cruz kicks a long field goal to keep us in and get us our sixth win of the season going into ODU the week after uh 33 30 is my score which is a over that's 63 total points and obviously I don't think I've ever picked against Charlotte not to cover the spread this season, and I'm not going to start now. So we will match on that. Uh, And I think I'm going to be sitting pretty going into the ODU game versus you. I wish we had a top dog award like the Sunday NFL does because I'm definitely kicking your butt on that right now. (laughs) We need to get an intern or something. (laughs) We do need to get an intern. Um, I will say that – Fun random stat to throw out: Marshall and Charlotte both four and six at the spread, which means covering the spread. They've done it four times each and not done it six times each. So interesting, kind of a toss up there. Something's got to break. Yeah, sometimes that that really gives you an inclination as to which way to go on things. For sure. So we we talked a little about the spread. We talked about the game. Let's talk about our key players. I can kick it off. It sounds like you already. I think Jonathan Cruz is going to be a big time player in this. Heck yeah. I, I'm going with Aaron McAllister cuz I don't think Benny LeMay is going to play again this week. And after an extra week of rest, do you think he's not going to play? Uh from the Monday interview with Coach Healy, it doesn't sound that promising. I know he mm-hmm. did work out on uh what whatever it was, a week ago, 2 weeks ago in our last game, but then didn't end up playing. It sounds like that could be the case here again. I think it's really up to Aaron McAllister to step up. Last last game, our running game wasn't really existent. It was really Chris Reynolds doing everything. So I think this is a big time for Aaron McAllister to solidify his spot as the starter next year and and a big player this year. So I, I'm going with him. I think 100 yards rushing, 30 yards receiving, a couple touchdowns, 
feel good about it. That's good. I'm going to stick to, I know it's unorthodox because normally we just do offensive players and we haven't really talked about Jonathan Cruz or made him our pick, but I'm going to stick with that. I really think that uh, with a game the way it's going to be, field goals and extra points are going to make the difference in the world on a, a close game like we hope it is. And so I think he's my star of the game. I'm going to go with uh, three field goals, two extra points. Is that well, that might not even add up. Yeah, your three. math doesn't work Maybe. at all. Maybe three field goals, three extra points gets us over 33. Uh, I don't know. I didn't major in math. I'm sorry. Uh, but I think he's going to have a big game, and the field goals that he does kick are going to be in like the 35 to 55 range. Crushes all of them. I like that. So moving on the defensive side of the ball, I've done this a lot, and I'm going to keep going with it. But it is senior day. There is a best player on our team, and his name's Alex Highsmith. And I think he's going to deliver. I think this is one of those games where your leaders, your best players really step up and they they realize the importance of it. This is his last home game ever at Charlotte. I think he gets a – I'm going to – you know what? I'm going to get aggressive here. Four sacks. Let's go. Okay. I like that. Four sacks. That, That puts him into double digits on the season, which is a really impressive mark for a college player. Um it's a high number. I, I would say it's a reasonable, here's where I'll go. I, I'm not going to pick them because you, you got them, but I'm going to say between him and Watts, there's four combined sacks. That puts both of them at like the two-ish range. That put him at, at uh, ten and a half on the season. That put Watts at nine and a half on the season. That's a pretty good tag team you got going on on opposite ends there. For me, I'm going to go, I don't, I, I'm not even sure we've picked him all season, but he's been quietly doing his thing. He's the leader in tackles on our team currently for the season. I'm going to go Marquavius Gibbs. He's got eight tackles on the season. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I just tend to ignore your picks because they're always wrong. Um, but he's got 80 tackles on the season. I'm looking for him to get into triple digits. That's a big day getting 20 tackles in, in a game, but I feel like they're going to be passing the ball a lot and, uh, we're going to be really reliant on our DBs to to make some plays and, and stop some some passing yards from getting real big. Wow. Well, you hear it here first. 20 Take tackles, day, right? four sacks. We're, we're both being very aggressive homers, but you have hey. to be when it comes to this time of, the, time of the year. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're not going to pick our team to show up as big as possible for the most important game in the history of – Charlotte 49ers football, why even come? Why why even have a podcast at that point? Like, we might as well just have a Marshall podcast. But <laughs> we don't. We love the Niners, and I feel like it's going to be a huge day. Well, that's why we are Charlotte. Let's go. Oh, burn. So, big, big day. We hope everyone's excited. We're hoping everyone heads out to the football game, the – the soccer game on Thursday. There's a women's basketball game on Sunday. Go to all of it. Everything. There's so much exciting stuff. I know we talk about it on Tuesdays when we get to all of it, but the, the Niners as a whole are rolling. Well, next, next football preview, we will uh, have some further analysis, maybe some interviews potentially. And uh, we'll talk about bowls. I've seen a lot of different projections. I've seen us versus Miami, Ohio, us versus Chapel Hill, us versus Virginia Tech at the Belk Bowl. There's lots of different bowls that have been projected on different websites. Obviously, you never know until it's, it's time. But first, we have to qualify for a bowl. But we'll definitely be talking about that and what matchups we'd like to see, where we'd like to see them, and all that good stuff. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, well, first we have to qualify for a bowl, and then then we've got to make sure that not only do we qualify for a bowl, but there's a bowl available for us. This is a tough year to be six and six in the league. If we win this week and have a chance at seven and six, I like our odds a lot better. But if if we're looking at finishing the week at six and six next next week, then we've got to really talk about you know what bowls are available with the number of teams that are bowl eligible in Conference USA this year, because it's it's dependent on that too. Sure. We we don't technically hold our own destiny there. 
But we'll get into all that after we beat Marshall. Yeah. And like we said, Marshall is at top of the conference. They will be more than likely, well, I guess if we beat them, we might mess that up, uh, playing in the Conference USA Championship game. So we could be playing spoiler here as well. So big game for them as well. Hopefully we get the W. We're predicting it. Charlotte seven-point dogs. Me and Sean both have them winning in a close margin. Sean has them by three. I have them by four. Sean's got the over as a lock. I've got the under as a lock. Sean's normally right, which means this is the week I'm going to be right. So follow me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good logic. If if I'm a, I'm a betting guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, the, the guy who's always wrong has got to be right eventually. It's true. That's why when you see red hit, a ton of money. that's why when you see red hit twenty times in a row, you you tend to go black, even though the odds continue to be the same. Eh, I've seen you lose at that quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we appreciate you listening. Remember to follow us on all social media. You could see really cool shots of us at basketball games, losing our minds. Anything else from you, Sean? No, I'm just pumped. I'm really pumped for this weekend. I hope the stadium's packed. I know it'll be packed. Like Mike Hill said, if you build it, they will come. And we've built it, so let's hope that they come. That's a great note to end on. So as always, remember to wear green. And we'll go Niners.